This episode of Pick Up the Six podcast is brought to you by Every Man Jack. If you haven't heard of them, they're a men's grooming company that creates some of the highest performing, best smelling products on the market. They believe it's not just about what you put in your body that matters, but what you put on your body from their body wash to deodorant to beard oil and more. They're made with naturally derived ingredients and incredibly outdoorsy scents that bring the best of nature to their bottles and bars. I'm a huge fan of all their stuff. The sandalwood scent, probably my favorite of all the things they have. And it's literally in my shower right now. So here's what you do. Head to everymanjack.com today and use our special promo code PUT6, PUT and the number six for 25% off on orders of 50 bucks or more, making small changes to your routine, even in the shower, can have a significant impact. And Everyman Jack makes that easy. Everyman Jack, naturally derived, outdoor inspired. We're also sponsored by Amino Vitals. Amino Vitals' mission is to provide the highest quality of amino acid-based nutritional products to all athletes aspiring to improve their conditioning and performance. The BCAAs, Glutamine and arginine help replenish the body's muscle proteins and jumpstart the recovery process. I've been using Amino Vital since last fall, got introduced to them, and I see a positive impact from their action and recovery products. It helps me just get rid of some of those, you know, aches and pains that come with a tough workout. Hit up amino-vital.com, use the code PUT6 at checkout and save 20% or just click on their link on the show page and save today. Resolute Ready is an open global community founded by the families of veterans to give support through mental and physical trauma. A global community spearheaded by a pair of friends and high impact women out of Australia. I'm honored to introduce you to Lydia and Susan and Resolute Ready on this episode of Pick Up the Six podcast. Hey guys, Brian Jodis back with another episode of Pick Up the Six podcast. Off the top here, just once again, thrilled to have you with us. Grateful for those sponsors who help us bring this program to you. And I just want to say I'm recording on 30 June, last day of the month here. For my friends that you're going to hear from in a minute, it's tomorrow, which is wild. We've got two amazing humans dialing in from Australia, but we've been doing really cool stuff through the ngbn.tv network all month. June is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. And every single day across our LinkedIn profiles, you had tons of people seeing videos that a group of us have been posting every single day with special messages for Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. And the fact that we're recording this interview that we're going to talk to these two ladies here in a moment, it's just, it's divine intervention. It's very fitting that it's the last day of the month here in the States. Uh, and for you listening. And so it's just, it's amazing. I'm grateful for the folks at NGBN.TV for what we're doing to create a streaming channel for men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, to create content for them, to ultimately provide a place for those men to be in community. Uh, Because our big goal is to stop men from doing that one act we can't undo. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for our sponsors and unpaid sponsorship for my man, Eddie Penny, And my unafraid t-shirt that I'm rocking on today's podcast, eddiepenny.com. He is a great man, former Navy SEAL, and his gear is awesome. I love this shirt. His Ephesians 6 shirt I was wearing the other day, and a friend of mine was like, where did you get that? That's awesome. Put on the full armor of God. Sent them the link. So, Eddie P., love you, man. Love what you're doing. Go check him out as well. And uh, that's just because he's a great person, and we love what he's doing there. So, go check him out. All right. Let's bring in Lydia Hall and Susan Hannigan all the way from Australia and Australia. Happy, happy Sunday morning. It's six <laughs> my time as we Saturday record. morning, Brian. Yeah. Saturday Sat- morning. Saturday. Oh, right. Yeah, it's right. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. So it's Saturday. I was yes. putting you way in the future. Anyways, happy Saturday morning. Good morning to you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Friday evening to you. Yes. You, uh, Susan said, I'm tired. I just got up. It's, you know, Saturday morning. We're going. I said, yeah, I'm at the end of my work week. So we're all going <laughs> to just get through this thing together. <laughs> Ladies, I'm thrilled to have you. Thanks for being with us. Awesome. Thank you. This, um, you gave me quite a joy. About two weeks ago, we probably got in contact for the first time. We've been chatting a little bit and figure out when we could make this interview work. And you reached out and you said, been listening to the show. We're creating a really incredible service and it's going to have a global impact. 
And the name of that is Resolute Ready. We're going to get to know you both and why you're doing it, but Resolute Ready is what brings us together today, an open global community founded by the families of veterans to give support through mental and physical trauma. And so when you're like, oh, Brian, okay, then totally makes sense why this is divine intervention that you would record this on the last day of June. And uh, I'm just thrilled to do it. But anyways, what's Saturday morning in Australia? What's going on? What's going on in the great, in the great big continent of Australia? What's happening over there right now? We'll talk about what you're doing with Resolute Ready, but what's going on over there? I just, I love it. It's cold, uh, Brian. It's cold. Cold. Because it's, it's winter here. So I, I happen to have an electric rug on my legs underneath the table. Um, and it is horrendously early for Saturday morning. It's 7.34 a.m. on a Saturday morning. So, you know, we're, we're, we're committed. You can tell oh, we're committed. We're passionate about what we're doing because it's 7.34 on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Lydia, no, she's, she's Lydia, she's a, a little exaggerating. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Like, you know, like if, if you're married to a veteran, you're up at four a.m. Susan, you've got a lucky. <laughs> no, no. I love it, Lydia. No. You you talk about that right, and that's a huge reason for this effort yeah. that you both are a big part of. Um, husband, your husband Duncan, a veteran. Yeah. Susan, just a massive supporter of those who have worn the uniforms. And when I say the uniforms, this audience will know what I mean. And that's oftentimes the warriors who put on the uniform with the flag of their country. But it's also those that put the uniform every day in our communities. Right. And one of the things that I've just been hearing a lot more of recently that I'm thrilled for, and I know our audience is, is when we talk about trauma, PTSD, ensuring that those who serve us get the care they need. Uh, we don't just mean those who put on the uniform of the nation, but also those that serve in our communities, first responders, EMT, police officers, fire, those folks as well. And so yeah. I'd love to hear uh, the why, Lydia, if yeah. you don't mind, the why behind yeah. Resolute Ready. A absolutely. The why behind Resolute Ready, um, I married um, a veteran who returned from East Timor. He was a um, a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. And um, when he got back, um, I didn't know him then, but when we got married, six months after, things changed. There was, mm -hmm. I knew that he was a bit of a different different man and there were kind of um, um, observations that I was making. He was extremely hypervigilant, hyper you know, there were a lot of anger outbursts, didn't manage well in crowds, reacted to sounds, um, we were having relationship problems and... Um, and then in one year, I had two members in my family that were suicidal. Mm. And um, thankfully, um, they're both alive. And I just felt after eight years now that they sent me in recovery that perhaps we can give back to community. Basically, we want to stop, uh, you know, death by suicide, you know, amongst these amazing men and women that serve our country, have such courage to get up and sacrificial and and yet I believe it is our duty of care on a global scale to look after these men and women and, and their families, mm -hmm. huge uh, repercussions on families. Um, so ResoluteReady.com is a website, but we've developed a Resolute Ready um, virtual hub which links all services on a local, national, global level that can happen in any country, really, um, that links you up to service providers in all the care. So you think about, like Brian, I think about what does one need to thrive in life, mm -hmm. right? You need you 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 know you need your employment, you need financial um, uh, income, you need to be have some sort of social engagement and connection and a sense of belonging and community. You've got to think about your mental and physical care. You, you need possibility support of legal uh, support and aid mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. the context of what we're talking about today. So we're talking about the transition. So how do we stop this from occurring? So when I look at our wonderful military um, and uh, first responder, you know, connected families and what they've got to deal with when they leave the service. Now, we're not saying every serving member ends up with PTSD or with this level of trauma, but there is a big, a huge cohort um, like in Australia at the moment, we've got, I think, something like 5,800 homeless veterans. Wow. Um, we've got claims in the rears and 
you know, not assigned yet and a whole range of, and these are just common factors that are coming, that sort of were highlighted to me across the globe. So the key is really is, you know, we've got this Resolute Hub that's a leading provider of support services for veterans, first responders and their families, but we need to focus on mental health, the well-being and the success, the, the, really the successful transition mm -hmm. into civilian life. Resolute really basically aims to save lives and foster unified, you know, um, support across agencies. And I believe through innovation, through collaboration, we can connect individuals to the right service that yeah. they need. Yeah. This is on a neat basis because as individuals, you know, we are all different. We operate differently. But when our brain is altered through this this you know, intense training, there's got to be some some level of um of reprogramming or um you know support in the transition from military first responder workforce to civilian life. We need to empower these individuals and we've got to help them thrive so that they can come their, you know, life's challenges. Because ultimately, Brian, our children get impacted, grandchildren mm -hmm. get yeah. impacted. Generations, and Gen generational yeah, gener impact. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's intergenerational and we've got to do everything in our power to stop that because life is precious. We've got to say yes to life, you know. And saying mm -hmm. no is not an option. And when you're stuck, think about problem solving, right? Because instinct, we've got that skill. And if we don't know the answer, it's just about knocking on doors until mm. we find the right one that works for us and our family. Yeah, yeah. well said. Susan, how did you get, how'd you guys get connected? Have you been friends for a while? What's the, what's the oh, path to this, to this power yeah. duo? <laughs> it, we haven't even been friends for two years yet, but we feel like we've, We've known each other forever. Mm -hmm. um, we just clicked instantly, and it was it was a god thing, Brian. Frankly, to to get us hooked up because it was via the US. Because I've been following the Mighty Oaks Foundation, give them a plug in the US, and I am just so impressed with what they do over there. And I was trying to find a similar organisation here in Australia mm -hmm. that I could support, and get yeah. behind. And um, so I found out about uh, Reroute recovery which is through um the owens and you've had them on your on That's your right. podcast yep and, yep shout out uh, to the owens family and all the amazing work they're doing oh, evan, they're evan and jenny owens yeah amazing people yeah amazing yep, yep. and it's um which by the uh, way is it gives me chills to think about just our connectivity through that yeah. without having knowing that yes. beforehand it's yes amazing. exactly yeah. exactly and, and if so I could, I'm, sorry, Susan, I just wanted to okay. mention also Andy and Zoe, who are the founders, who brought Reboot um, to Australia, who live in Queens, Queensland. Very and cool. Just, that, you know, talking about connection. Yeah. And uh, Susan, sorry, Dal, um, an amazing oh. community engagement liaison mm. for us. Sorry, I've got to give her a big plug. She's amazing. Awesome. Oh, oh thank you, darling. Um, so um, I was... Um, I was in a Bible study group, online Bible study group through the Military Christian Fellowship, and I asked one of the members who is a, um, he's a um, padre with the reserves here in Australia, if he knew of an organisation like the Mighty Oaks Foundation here in Australia, and he put me on to um, PTSD Resurrected, which is run by Andy and Zoe Cullen. Um, Andy is an Australian Army veteran, and Andy let Lydia know that I was here in Adelaide. Lydia rang me and from from the first phone call, we just clicked. We just connected. So we made um, we made a, a time to catch up for lunch and it was just, we was just in sync. And because I've been searching for such a long time mm. for somewhere, a platform, something that I could get involved in where I could um, give a hand to veterans and their families because it's something that's been on my heart for such a long time and I've never known how to get involved, how to help. What what so what put I, it there? What put it there? What put it I on your I don't really know. I mean, both my grandfathers served, um, but they both died before I was born, so I never knew them. Mm -hmm. Um my maternal grandfather served in New Guinea against the Japanese, and my paternal grandfather was in the Australian light horse and served in the Middle East in World War One. Wow. Um, and he he didn't get married until he was 41, and then it was 23, and then they proceeded to have 10 children. 
So um, so I knew of their service, but I, mm-hmm. I never knew them. And it's just, um, I think, again, I think God had put it in my heart a long time ago and finally um, I got to a point where I could get involved with something that was so, and when I heard Lydia's story and when I heard her vision and her passion, I knew that this was where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And she's just got um, such a vision and she's got the strategies and she's got the ideas and she's got, you know, she gets in and does things. It's not just, oh, we need to do something, this is awful, we need to do something. But she's in touch with politicians and she's in touch with other organisations and she just gets in there. Mm -hmm. And um, she gets things rolling and she makes an impact on people. They can see that she's genuine. They can see that she's passionate, highly intelligent. She's got a a, a background in education. Mm -hmm. So she really knows what she's talking about and she's just got all these ideas that she's that she's getting put into practice and she mm. just and I thought oh, this is it this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing and I have several um very dear friends who are all US combat veterans and I just love those guys and mm-hmm. I've always thought how do I how can I do something for these men um they've all got different stories different histories um different experiences, different uh, reactions to their experiences, and they're all valid and they're all just, you know, they don't. none of them talk much about their personal experiences. Sometimes they'll talk about their brothers, you mm-hmm. know, and yeah. what's happened. Um, but just I know enough about each one of them to know that they're just, you know, and none of them would, they would all be very cross if I referred to any of them as heroes because mm. that's just not who they are. They're all humble mm. men. Um, and just how do I help m- these men, but also men like these, men and women like these, their families, because yeah. they've all yeah. had trauma to one degree and another. Um, and also, you know, being combat veterans is just one part of who they are. It, mm-hmm. It's... It's a part of who they are, but when you know, you know, the guys that I'm talking about, you understand how they ended up serving because that's who they are. So it was just um, I've probably gone on far too long, Brian. But, no, it, but that, you're, you, the, oh, the picture oh, you I, paint is one that that will resonate with our listeners. And, you know, you just had me thinking about, you think about the guy or gal that goes into military service specifically yes. and, and serve proudly for those years. But then when that, that sort of chapter of life ends, there's so much talent, potential and heart. And what is so sad about this is that for far too many, they get isolated and then do that one act again that we can't undo. There's a problem sandwich here, Lydia, hear out my metaphor for a second. The yeah. problem is you've got a lot of veterans and first responders that are impacted by PTSD, sort of the, right? So if you're going to give somebody a comp, you know, if you're trying to critique somebody, right, you do. So I'm kind of doing a reverse that. So there's a problem with that. But then the good is all these organizations then get established, right? So the meat of the sandwich are these amazing organizations that get established to address that. But then sort of problem on the backside of it is, how, it's over. It can be overwhelming. How do I know? Right. How do we know where all that is? So the virtual hub that you have at Resolute Ready is aiming to solve that. So tell me about that and what you're trying to do with that. Well, base. Well, what we're trying to do is, I believe early intervention is key. Right. If we can get in early before it becomes a crisis situation. Mm-hmm. I believe we need a platform where everyone around the world can go to to access this support, you know, and preferably before crisis. So there's a list of needs, anything from, um, you know, housing, homelessness to aged care, how to put a claim, um, you know, um, how to support your children in the family, how to support yourself as a partner. There's a whole range of different organisations that can come on board. But the thing is, we don't know where they are. Like in in Australia, we've got 6,000 existing service organisations, but we actually don't uh, don't know where they are, Brian. Mm -hmm. So 
But I know that this is, you know, quite common across the globe. So why not formulate and, and coordinate and just bring it all to one central place where everyone can collaborate, support one another, like the most amazing thing happened last week. I had a, a, a message from uh, an Australian Defence Force member living in England um, needing support. So I connected him to support within, you know, the agencies and organisations within England because they provide support. It doesn't matter where the veteran mm -hmm. lives, you know, you, you, you support them, you know. Um, now I've got this wonderful... Um, Marine um, that contacted me um, through the US um, A and through America, and I, he wrote something beautiful. As a proud US Marine Gulf War veteran and a Boston firefighter for the last 25 years, I'm thrilled to connect with Resolute Ready and contribute to the global support of our veteran military first responders and their families. The meaning of life for me is to live sober, share my experience and do God's will by companionship with my brothers and sisters serving around the world. So for you, John Fitzpatrick, New Hampshire, United States, bless you. And just this is another sign of, you know, bringing the globe together on such an important cause because mm -hmm. we can't do it on our own. But this is kind of going, the hub or the Resolute Ready hub is like an educational tool, like a, an, if you, a library in the sky that you mm -hmm. can go to get information and we'll continue to develop that and collaborate with countries around the world and look and work together at local, national and, and at a global yeah. level. Um, this is really exciting because it is actually attracting, you know, a bit of attention um, from a wide community and it's so desperately needed. Mm -hmm. This is a, but this is a Herculean effort. Like this is a massive lift to populate. Yes a virtual hub like this. So Susan, how, how are you doing that now? And then our goal here is for everybody listening to think about those organizations that you know, like Warriors Heart, Reboot Recovery, Camp Hope, PTSD Foundation of America, Purple Heart Homes, Infinite Wars. I'm just listening, right? Off the top of my brain. And I'm a little overwhelmed trying to remember everybody we've had on this great podcast that are serving warriors in this space. Right. But part of our call to action today is to get you listening to say, well, I can list off four or five more than what Brian just said. Let's get them in there. Right. So, Susan, how can folks. Right. How are you populating that? And then people got to be able to add to it. Right. How can they do that, too? So there is a link um, on our Resolute Ready website. Um, there is a link to uh, the virtual hub. And then on that, there's an option to um, add your service in there. Great, great. Uh, Lydia and I then, um, we, we check that out before it goes live because we're very protective of our community and we want to make sure that the organisations that go up on the website mm -hmm. uh, are genuine and that they're really doing good work. So we check that and then it goes up there. There is also an option. People can um, leave, a, a rate a service organisation if they've been there. And, um, you know, if we get a negative rating, a negative comment about an organisation, we'll check that out and and follow that up to make sure um, that it, that it's all okay. And, and we'll work with an organisation um, to resolve any issues um, but if if we think that they're not doing the right thing um, for for members for for our community then then we'll just take them off um, because we just want to make sure that we're giving people excellent choices mm. and it's all about choices because everybody's different and you know and we and I've mentioned combat veterans this morning but it, it's for everybody. You you might have worn the uniform and you never got the opportunity to deploy, and and you you or the your MOS in the military meant that you you didn't um, get out there and 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 um, get into into combat. But everybody has a job in the military, and those people at the tip of the spear can't do their job without everybody else um, doing 
their job. So it's really important that we're not just targeting combat veterans. We, we're talking anyone that's uni worn mm -hmm. the uniform. We're also talking about first responders as well. So that's the police and that's uh, fireys and that's um, paramedics and ambulance um, personnel and, and their families because so often – especially, in, you know, Lydia will know that there were options there for Duncan. There are options there for those who've actually served, but the families are scrambling to find something to help them. And so, um, again, it's 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 on, on the website. Um, there's also an email for people who want more information or who would like a bit of assistance, whatever. Please reach out to us. We will get in contact with you. We will work with you. Um, but we're not competing with anybody. What we want to do is bring the community together so that people, especially when they're in crisis mode, they don't, they don't have the bandwidth to go searching mm -hmm. all over to try and find an organisation that will help them. We want everybody to be able to come to one place and then look in, in your, under your country or your state uh, for the organisations that will suit you because there are all sorts. People need all sorts of different assistance, just a bit of a hand. Sometimes they'll need assistance with DVA claims because uh, mm, they're, not, yeah. they're not easy to get through that whole process. So, um, Or whether it's things like equine um, therapy. Yep. You know, so like all like my things. buddies at the Bonfire Ranch down in yes, Alabama, right? Yes, providing that. Yep. yes. I, I listen to that podcast and they're just doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. So there are so many organisations out there. And we just want to make sure that people know about them, that they can go to one place and find all these different organisations and just for people to check out ones that catch their eye that think, I think that one could work yeah. for me. So that's yeah. that's really important. Mm. Lydia, we've talked about sort of what the hub looks like, how folks can right help be a part of that. You're talking about early intervention, suicide prevention. You're doing a really unique thing in this education backpack. Right. Can you explain yeah. to us what that is? Yeah, look, um, I, I've also got a bit of an education background. So um, the way um, I, I've uh, be, been working with Bench Studio and they, they're the ones that have designed the actual website and they have a strong education background. So that's my background. So I wanted to present, you know, a forum that was easy to use. Mm -hmm. easy to research, it, almost like an online library where you yeah. can access these services and supports. Um, I, um, I just, um, uh, to me, it's about saving lives. Yeah. Um, that, that's what, that's what really drives me because, um, uh, my, my husband was, um, quite critical at one point and we've gone through our own journey. So not only do I, you know, bring to the table lived experience, but also, um, education and, um, knowledge on how to bring people together, um, and um, for me, it's been an absolute blessing to be and a privilege to be in this position and to work with amazing people like Susan and working like with yourself and the connections that we're making because we all want to address the, the issue of everyone deserves a quality of life. Yep. How they access that as long as it's safe and that we, you know, there are, uh, you know, boundaries and, and, and right um, measures put in place to protect mm -hmm. our community. Um, I will continue to do this work um, until, you know, it my time to move over um, because... Well, it's because um, it's worth it. It's, it's worth, worth it, right? It's worth it. Life is precious and yep. we do it for not our children but the children to come mm -hmm. um, and no one should live uh, with this level of experience of... Um, of not having hope in their yeah. in their heart, you know, yeah. that there is life worth living no matter what. It's just a matter of asking a question, and that is, where do I go to get the help? Yeah, right. And you're putting a tangible thing in front of them. Correct. That can help them get Correct. That. Yeah. That's right. And and if um Resolute Ready doesn't have the answer, I can reassure you that with as this grows and as we develop our global connections, we will find an answer or, or a solution or bridge a gap. And that I think that's what we're doing. We're actually bridging yeah. a huge gap um, that our global community is facing. You know, I think about this. Jesus says, and I'm gonna just get scriptural for a second. I'm gonna read it so I don't bumble it. Matthew 18. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, 
does he not leave the 99 on the mountain to go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray. You will move heaven and earth through the efforts of what you're building through this community. And if one is saved, you will have been successful, right? Yeah. And, I, and, and that's, that's it's a massive focus of what I'm so grateful for every single one of you listening right now for being a part of that community and locking shields with us to leave the 99. Because it's not always easy to do that. The easier way would say, come on, one in 100. We're doing pretty good. We got 99 of 100. No, right? We leave no man behind. And we do that by giving of ourselves. And you two, let me put the, the, the pat on the back of the effort that you're undertaking here to quite literally better the globe. That's yeah. amazing. How can people help you? Because now my listeners are, okay, first of all, we've got organizations that need to be in the hub. Secondly, guys, they need your financial support too. So I'll be the one to say that, right? How can people help you both ensure this is a successful mission? Well, um, I, I think it's really important to, um, if there's a service that would like to uh, be added to the hub, you know, to the virtual hub, that they've got access to do that, to get in touch with us. Um, there is um, uh, ways of donating. Um, I've got to be up front, though, um, Brian. Uh, we're in the process of of uh, becoming a non-for-profit organisation. Right. You know, when you do something like this, yep. you've got to put the right things in place. Yep. Um, um, but, you know, donations at this point, you know, are, are very much welcomed. Um, it, it's it's re just really important that that this is a world collaboration effort. It's not just, you know, a, a group of people from Australia that have put this together. This is yeah. about the whole global community. Um, you, you know, it's not about individual um, uh, attention for yourself because, as we know, this is God's community. Mm, this is right. God's global community. And we need to make the difference in lives. And if people are happier... What an amazing society world mm. that we could actually live in. Um, and we need to share knowledge. We need to share what we know. And we need to make those connections and bridge the right people together um, and give them hope. Give them hope. And there's lots of ways of doing that, like through our donation, um, through the web. But there's going to be so much more opportunity. Um, I'll be having discussions with um, uh you know, um, our federal ministers and um, state ministers, I've been doing that. I've been really um, lobbying quite hard to bring this issue to the service as service and that we just really need to work together as a globe at local, national and global level to really support these amazing men and women and their children. Yeah. Now, we can't forget the children, Brian. The children get impacted by PTSD, you know, when dad or mum get hospitalised because they need to be treated and they don't understand. And, um, you know, so young children get really impacted. Partners get impacted. Mm -hmm. Like my first experience, not even knowing what was going on, I felt like oh, I didn't know what was going on. I thought one, one minute I had a beautiful marriage and then suddenly mm -hmm. something was going downhill. And and until I I reached out and learned more about PTSD and, and what are some of the issues it was only then that I actually gained the strength. Mm. And I just knew in my heart, I had to do something. The world couldn't continue like this. So, you know, God put it on my heart. I needed to action, uh, you know, and conceptualize and, and bring people together. And so resolute, ready, one stop, you know, one call, one yeah. life. Yeah. We're here for all of you. He needs you to take the step, guys, right? He can put it on your heart, but he needs you to take the step. You got to step in the direction. That's right. right. Which is a Don't good reminder, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and get people around you that feel passionate about it too, that can assist. That's what these two have done. You got a great shield lock on here, ladies. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm just so honored to get to know you, share more about us. Resolute Ready is the name of the organization. It's Lydia Hall, Susan Hannigan. Uh, give us the website, right? Susan, give me a little data dump, as I call it. Where should folks go? 
Where can they see more? All that good stuff. ResoluteReady.com is where they go. And Easy. and they'll find everything on there. Um, it really is an amazing website. It's it's pretty new. Um, yeah, the, we, you, when you showed it to me and said how new it was, I was blown yeah. away. Right. Yes. It looks great. It's super user friendly. The amount of categories and data. I mean, you guys are really putting together a great tool. So go over there. First of all, right. Listen to the show. Go check out ResoluteReady.com. Yeah. Find Brian, ways to support them. So I just wanted to say too, one of the main reasons that I'm so passionate about this is gratitude. Mm. I am so grateful for the men and women who put on the uniform and go out there and do all of that to keep me safe. Yeah. Um, because I don't have to. You know, we were joking this morning that oh, it's seven thirty a.m. on a Saturday, but I'm not out there carrying you know thirty kilos on my back and getting shot at, and yeah. or I'm not out on the streets in the community um, being spat on or yeah. attacked or yeah. whatever. Somebody else is doing all of that for me, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And um, America is so close with Australia in that we, we've had a shared history and, and certainly with our military we've we've collaborated and and worked together, fought together for many, many, many years and we have something special, I think, and I'm just incredibly grateful for all of the American men and women who've served in uniform because that benefits us as well because we are allies. Mm -hmm. And so gratitude is just is is such a huge part of why I do this and um, you know, we're all volunteers. We, we've, um, you know, we don't we don't get paid for doing this. We're doing it because we love it, and yeah. we see yeah. such a huge need, and we want to help. Um, we can't just sit by and say, "Oh, well, that's a shame, isn't it?" Um, somebody will do something, I'm sure. Um, we we just need to get together and come together. Let's not compete. Let's not worry about who's getting credit or anything mm -hmm. like that or if somebody else oh well i don't want that organization to be up there because they might compete with me no no we've got to come together work together this is a mission for all of us and we want as many people involved as possible because we can make a difference we can help and you know so many people i think particularly those that have served need a mission Mm -hmm. I think we all do to some extent. We need a reason for being. Um, but I think those that have served because they've already had that mission, they have that that um, service mindset, and there are many ways to get involved in, in your local community or in service organisations that are helping others. So so please reach out. Please get involved. Please check out our website. Um Please send us an email if you'd like more information and we'll get back to you. And we, we just want to work together. Yep. Amazing. Okay. Ladies, I'm so grateful to know you. Count you as friends. Thank you, Brian. Right. In this community. Thank and just so thankful for the work you're doing. Thank no, you so much. We really appreciate you having us on. Hey, have a great weekend. Thank you. Go, en go enjoy Bye. your weekend. Yes, we will. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. That's Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's Lydia Hall, Susan Hannigan. I'm Brian Jodis. That's been this episode of Pick Up the Six Podcast.